guys come make the pelican tote with me it looks like such a cute bag and the best thing of all is this pattern is free on bagstock.com so check the description for a link to this cute cute pattern let's get to making it okay so i am going to walk through making the pelican tote this is a pattern off of bagstock.com and it's by um i'm not sure how to say her name but it's right here <laughs> i'm sorry um so this is the pelican tote it is a beginner lever uh, level pattern and um and yeah so i thought it looked really cute and there are minimal items needed to complete this pattern meaning you don't need a ton of hardware like d clips and and all that kind of stuff um so i'm going to show you what i gathered together to make this pattern um and walk through the items that are needed i will link to this pattern um in the description of this video if you're interested in making it so the materials that um, are needed are all listed so um, we need a fat quarter of quilting cotton for the exterior fabric a half yard of quilting cotton contrasting fabric and a half yard of quilting cotton lining so I'm going to use this fabric for my lining I'm going to use this um, faux leather for the contrasting fabric and I'm going to use the fabric here for the exterior fabric. And then we also need a yard of sew in foam interfacing, such as flex foam or soft and stable. I do have some soft and stable and I have some other, um, you know, foam type interfacing. However, um, I'm not going to need any type of interfacing on um, the faux leather here, but I am actually going to use Decoville to get a nice, firm, solid bag. Um, so that's what I'm going to use to apply to my exterior fabric that is not the um, faux leather here. I also have the woven interfacing. This is a woven interfacing that I'm trying for the first time from Emmeline Bags. And it says that it is comparable to um, the Pelon um, Shape Flex. So that is what I'm going to give for a try this time for the first time and I'll let you know my thoughts on it. Um, okay, so now we need a nine inch and an eight inch or longer interior and exterior zipper. I'm going to use this zipper here. Here are the matching pulls. It is a rose gold, so I think it'll go nicely with the colors that I've chosen for this bag. Then I also need a magnetic snap, which I chose in a rose gold to match the zipper. And then we just need some coordinating thread and some additional items um, that we might need to use as well. So um, it's info on the items that we need to cut that aren't included in the pattern pieces in the back. So this is all the items that are needed to make the bag aside from like a rotary cutter or thread and different things like that. I think it's a nice amount of stuff that won't be too overwhelming to find and purchase. I'll put links to all the items I'm using in the description and then I'll show some clips of me working through this project. Okay, so I have everything cut and prepped. I have my two zippers cut. Here are the closure tabs I needed to cut four, and these are going to be what holds the, um, the magnetic closure. I have my exterior side panels. There are four of these and I had to mirror them. I did not cut the interfacing um, since I am using the faux leather. These are my two bag straps from this exterior contrasting fabric. And then here is the top panel of the front of the bag. This is going to go above the zipper and it has the woven interfacing and the, um, the Decoville on it. Exterior front 
center panel panel this um again has the decoville and woven interfacing and this um, is going to go on the um, bottom of the zipper on the front of the bag um this is the back panel on the exterior um back of the bag these are for pockets another pocket panel and they these are both all cut with the woven interfacing already here to them and this is the lining of the bag there are two of these now it does i did apply the woven interfacing it does suggest that you can use foam interfacing if you would like um if you're planning to make this foldable, foldable skip the foam since my bag is going to be so stable from the um stuff i did to the exterior i'm going to skip the foam and just see how it is it's pretty nice with just the um woven interfacing so i'll see i'll let you know afterward if i wish i would have gone ahead and done the foam or not but right now this is what i have with everything prepped and i'm going to start putting the bag together okay so i finished the front panel with the zipper pocket it was really easy to attach and i think it looks really good with this bag so now what we're doing is we're going to be attaching the side panels to the bag so i'll just be folding them over um, using my wonder clips to clip them in pace, place and just sewing um, a half inch seam along the sides okay so that will be finishing up the front of the bag and then we'll be moving on and doing the same thing with the back of the bag. This is the back panel and the attaching the sides of the bag. And this will be finishing up the, um, the front and back of the bag. So here are the front and back panels of this tote bag already finished. Oh my goodness, it came together so beautifully, so easily, and it looks so good. This pattern is so easy to follow. I'm not even finished with this tote bag and I wanna make another one. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna keep on going. Um, next, I'm gonna be working on the pocket that goes in the lining. And so these are my lining pieces and I'll be attaching the pocket and the zipper and finishing up this bag. Okay, so now I'm ready to work on the interior zipper pocket and i think this is probably one of the hardest um skills to learn when it comes to zipper pockets because you're going to need to draw this box sew around it and inlay the zipper in the opening and i think this one's just the trickiest to remember and understand how to do but once you learn this skill you'll be able to use it <laughs> you'll just you'll really want to use it all the time because when I finally figured out how to do it and the tricks to it um, I was wanting to put these <laughs> zipper pockets on everything so I have this grid laid out um, I was trying this new marking pin that I got in one of my boxes and it was bleeding a little bit through here thankfully it's just on the liner and it is water erasing anyway it didn't come through so, I mean, that's fine. Um, I was just a little surprised about how much it bled, but I'll still be able to follow this. So I have this marked up and then what you do is you need to flip your fabric over. And this is where I feel like it kind of gets a little more confusing because it seems weird that you're gonna be pinning um, your pocket on the right side of the lining. But um, that, is, that is how it goes, and it is correct. So the pattern instructions say to um, pin this two inches from the top. So I have my center, and um, usually what I do just to find the center is, you know, roll it over and, you know, mark that way. So I know where the center is here. Oh, I grabbed the zipper. And then I'm going to find this, the center on here and just line the centers up 
So I have this um, here and then find the two inches down. Ooh, I was really close. And move that up. So then I'll just pin this in place. And what I do is go to the sewing machine and you sew around this outer box. You don't sew down the middle or the triangles. Um, it's really interesting how it works out. And like I said, once you figure out how to do that little trick, you'll be wanting to put these interior zipper pockets on everything. Um, at least I did. Maybe I'm just weird that way, but all right, I'm going to pin this and sew around and then I'll show you how it looks. Okay. So as you can see, I stitched all the way around that outer rectangle and because I placed the back, the pocket panel in the right place, you can see that I did catch the pocket panel. So here's where the magic happens. We are going to cut the triangle on each side and down the center line that I drew. Um, now we wanna make sure that we don't cut through our stitches. So we gotta be pretty precise with this. You wanna get as close to the stitches as you can, but you don't wanna cut them. And the reason you wanna get close to them is because um, that'll give you less, um, the closer you get, the less pulling of your fabric you'll see at the edges there. So I'm gonna get started with my seam ripper and then switch to some small scissors because we wanna get close and my big fabric scissors won't allow me to get really close. So I'm gonna cut through here and then we'll see how beautifully this com pocket comes together. So I'm gonna snip close to the lines of stitching. This is really scary to do because, especially on camera, because I don't wanna put my head right up on there. And let's cut to the other side. Okay, and then let's snip it to this side first. Hopefully I'm still in the camera. Okay. All right. Okay, so what we do here now is I'm gonna unpin this and we're gonna flip the fabric for the pocket into the lining. And this was so surprising to me how it worked um, because I was really not understanding how this whole process would work the first time I did it. But um, it really all makes sense after you do it for the first time because when you flip this pocket in you see that your um, wrong sides all line up right so this pocket's going to be in the lining between the lining and the interior um, of this bag and once we attach the other side of the pocket on, you can see that once the zipper is on here and you open the zipper, you'll see the beautiful pocket lining and everything just happens to magically all work out. So without pressing this, it's really not wanting to stay in place, but here's what we do. We're gonna press this down and make a nice seam. This is remember the lining. And then after we press everything, we're gonna pin our zipper in place here. And we'll top stitch around catching the zipper. And so we'll have the beautiful zipper here laying nicely in, um, in the lining of our bag. So we have a pocket. So I'm gonna do those steps and then I'll come back and show you how it looks. Okay, 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 look how beautiful it turned out. And one thing I wanna point out is that if you are afraid to clip close to the, um, 
to the stitches on the other side and get a lot of pulling around the edges. Remember, this is an interior pocket. Don't stress over it, especially your first time doing it. And as you can see here, when I went back around to meet up, I stitched one stitch too far and have a little bit of extra stitching. I'm not going to stress about it. This is the interior of the bag. Nobody is going to expect inspect that that closely. So here is the zipper pocket opening all finished. It works beautifully. I am obsessed with this rose gold hardware. It is gorgeous. So one thing I want to tell you to keep in mind is to try to remember to keep this zipper pull at least halfway open because when we flip this and attach the other side of the pocket what we are going to do is just zip around the side or zip <laughs> we're just going to stip, stitch around the sides the top and the side we're going to leave the bottom open and we're going to do this because um, this is going to be how we flip the bag later because we'll be closing up the pocket rather than the interior lining and um, this just makes a little more clean look to the inside of your bag because you um, won't be top stitching the main lining you'll be top stitching the um, interior pocket lining okay so i'm going to um, trim up a little bit of my zipper here and i'm going to pin this pocket in place and stitch around it and we'll meet back here to show how to finish up this bag okay so yeah, as you can see i sewed around the outside of the pocket on three sides and left the bottom open i did um and i usually do this i fold up each side a quarter about a quarter of an inch and i catch it in the seams it'll just make it easier when you flip it to um already have the fold there to stitch it on the other side it's just a little little tip um so this pocket is finished and the next step that we have and we're going to be lining it up on the corners of our bag on the interior and exterior and we're going to trace here and um dart our fabrics together so um I'm going to get to doing that. Okay, so I have all the darts sewn and I backstitched really well at the start and end. Um, I'm going to clip off about a quarter inch from my stitching. The lining was really easy to do with the quilt cotton. Um, it was really easy to keep everything lined up with just a pin. So those were super easy. Now with my faux leather, it was a little harder. I placed a lot of clips because you don't want to use a straight pin here it will leave a hole in your um, faux leather the same with vinyl but what i did was um i did a layer of stitches right inside of those that i'm going to cut by and that's just to hopefully help keep um, some pressure off of the off of the stitching here so that I'm not showing a lot of threads um, when the back bag is in use. So hopefully that extra layer of stitching will help out with that stress on this area and reinforce everything. I'm using um, thread that is really close to the colors that I'm using, so they won't show up as much, but if you ended up stitching with white or some other color that doesn't match nicely, definitely do an extra layer of stitching just to help them not show. So I'm gonna clip off this fabric, like I said, um, maybe about a quarter an inch from there just to get rid of some bulk and then I'll be moving on to the next step. So now I'm just working on the bag um, closure tabs. I used the template to mark where the closures are going to go and then I'll use the washers to line up where I need to place the um, the holes for the tabs to close. I also am going to use some fusible fleece and some woven interfacing just to um, add on to add reinforcement and to seal off the um, the closures so that they don't rip and leave marks in my um, in my tabs later on. So I'm going to mark these up in 
move on with completing the tabs. Just as a quick note with these tabs, I did um, try to just heat it gently onto the fleece that is here to protect the um, other side from the hardware. I didn't apply a lot of direct heat to my faux leather. Well, these closures were stressful as heck to sew the top stitch on. Um, this is the one I did first, and I would recommend using a um, zipper foot to go around. It was a lot easier to maneuver around the tab. Um, you can see like where the bulk was, even though I snipped the edges um, before I flipped it, the bulk there wanted to push my um, foot away and it made it really hard to get a nice curve around the edge. Um, I'm not going to stress about it. It, you know, <laughs> the rest of the bag is going to look so cute. If you don't use um, a thick, heavy fabric like this, if you use the quilt cotton on the tabs or something like that, um, I think this will be a lot easier to sew. Um, but I don't think they look that bad and, um, they're going to be kind of more in the interior of the design of this bag. So I am not going to let this make me feel bad about the bag that I'm making. Um, I don't sweat the small stuff like this. So here are the tabs and I'm ready to move on to the next step of the bag, which is attaching these to the lining of the bag. So, um, they're both going to be laying um, tab side up, it looks like from the photo. Um, so I'm going to pin, I, I'll actually use clips instead of pin, like they say to do, but, um, these are just going to be basted in place in the center of the bag. So I'm going to top stitch those or baste them in place, um, on the lining and then We'll see what we move on to next. I don't know if I've showed any of the um, photos in here, but the pattern for this bag is nicely photographed all the steps and it makes it really easy to follow. So after doing the basting of the closures, I'm going to move on to making the straps of the bag. And if you remember, um, I am using the uh, faux leather again and I'm just going to be marking the center folding these edges in and then folding it in half and top stitching along each side so the um the straps for this bag are going to be really easy to make and then we'll just be following the directions measure in and basting the straps in place on each side of the exterior not on the um, lining on the exterior and it looks like it's really easy we'll just be lining it up with the um, with the accent fabric so we'll be basting those in place and then it looks like we're just going to be finishing up the lining um, we're going to be sewing these in place and then we'll be flipping the bag and sewing close that pocket that we left open. So we are nearing the end here. So I'm going to make the straps and I'm going to um, baste all of these hardware pieces in place. And then we'll move on to finishing the bag. Okay, so I have my tabs basted on and I have my straps made. I just wanna show that when I make straps, a lot of the time I do a quarter inch seam. Um, it is just really hard for me to do an eighth of an inch seam when I'm doing straps. And um, because of the bulk on this particular fabric, you can see that some of my stitches are longer than others, even though I adjusted my machine as much as possible to um, to sew this nicely. So I raised my presser foot. I, um, I went really slow, but I still skip seams. I'm not going to worry about it. That just is what it is with a homemade bag. Um, if you're using a lighter weight fabric, it's going to be a lot easier to sew the straps. Okay. So now, um, 
it's time where I can start putting the linings together. I have the lining um, for the front of the bag and the back of the bag. And what we'll be doing is pinning, or in this case, clipping the straps in place. And you're gonna be doing them inside of the bag. I'm going to, because when this flips, um, this part is going to be the part that's on the outside and I like it better. I'm going to put the part that is so nicer facing the bag and you're going to want to make sure you don't have twists or anything like that in your strap. So I'm going to pin these in place just inside of this quilt cotton. Okay, so I have the linings sewn together and I made sure to meet the darts seams up. I sewed double stitches around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim close to the second set of stitches. I did mark um, where I wanted to come out to a 5 8 in, of an inch seam and where I wanted to be at a, a half inch seam as suggested in the pattern. So I am going to keep, make sure my zipper is open in here and I have the um, pocket open for flipping. So I'm going to trim that up. And then I basted my straps onto the exterior of the bag and I do need to sew these together as well. And I'm going to um, keep these at a half an inch seam all the way around. I did the 5 8 and half an inch here as suggested because it helps the lining sit inside of the bag a little bit more. So um, this is going to be a little bit trickier to sew together. I'm going to use my wonder clips and pin around and be sure to meet the seams of the bag here as well. So I'm going to pin around those really, really good. The reason it's going to be hard to sew, um, sew is these are pretty bulky in here, um, but we'll make it work. All right, so the lining is sewn and trimmed. And again, I double stitched and the exterior is sewn and trimmed. I double stitched there as well. So according to the instructions, we're gonna turn this, the exterior right side out. Let's see how it looks. It's always tricky doing this when you have the nice firm fabrics like the Decoville. Okay, it looks really good. We got everything lined up nicely. That's why we use a million and one wonder clips to keep everything nice and lined up. How gorgeous already. This is gonna be a really cute nice bag okay so now that we have that we're going to um, put this inside of the lining right side out and we're going to stitch around um, around the top so we'll have to make sure our straps are in so let me see I want to see what So we want the part that has the pocket on the back of the bag. So we're gonna put it in this way. Just wanted to make sure, looking at the instructions. Okay. And you want your tabs and your straps to be on the inside of the bag. So I'm gonna get my wonder clips and I'm gonna pin around. Okay, so I have around the top of my bag all pinned and I wanna share a few tips with you. Okay, so first, when you're pinning your lining and your exterior fabric together, I like to pin um, where the seams meet on the side first, um, on both sides so that I can work this around, the fabric around and make sure it's even and clip around here. 
Now, sometimes when I make bags like this and I go to pin across the top, I notice like maybe the lining fabric will be too loose or the exterior fabric will be looser than the other. So what I do, and you can probably see it here, my lining fabric was a lot looser. So I just kept um, bringing the seam in a little bit more and I would stitch down and gradually meet the seam before and just keep doing that until um, these fit together nicely. And I did it evenly on both sides. Now that just makes sure that when I'm sewing around the top of this bag that I don't have fabric bunching up because you're not going to want your lining or your especially your exterior fabric to be all bunched up somewhere it's just not going to look nice and clean another tip is to make sure your zipper is open where you're going to flip on this lining pocket so i'm going to go stitch across the top it's a half inch seam i'm going to go stitch across there and then we'll flip the bag out and we will um, top stitch this pocket closed and we'll top stitch along the top of the bag and we'll be all finished. Okay, so I stitched the top of the bag closed. At some spots, you can really see I had a lot of pulling um, from hitting the where the straps are and where the tab is. Um, so I think that's kind of to be expected when we flip the bag and top stitch. I think everything should be Okay, so let's start pulling the bag through. See how, see how it actually looks finished. Well, not finished. It always feels like it's finished when you flip it, but you still have a lot of, well, not a lot, but sometimes you still have a few little details you need to work out. This is the most intense part because you don't want to, mess anything up flipping it through and then just seeing if you did everything right make sure everything worked out so see here this is what I mean having that already tucked in makes it nice to just top stitch across there so that we will have to do but the back is really looking good okay so let's put this in for now so we can just take a look at the bag. Feels weird with the pocket um, just sliding down. Okay, so this is going to be tricky here because we need to get our Decoville to fold in so that we don't have a weird rim along the top and so that we're not pulling the lining away from the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to have to go through and clip really well to keep that Decoville in here down and we want our tabs to come into the center of the bag too because the tabs are going to hold our bag shut in the center here. But how cute. What do you think of the bag so far? Let me know in the comments. The only thing I wish I had fixed was my zipper. Um, I prefer it to be closed on the side and open. What happened was I forgot to stitch across my zippers and when I was working on this, I pulled it off. And then when I pulled it back on, I did it in the wrong direction, <laughs> which was um, an oversight on my part. I was just really happy to finally get it back on because I'd worked at it for a while <laughs> trying to get it back on. But if that's the only thing on the bag that I'm not completely happy with, I think that's okay because you know what? It still works. It still functions fine. <laughs> it's just makes me laugh so i'm gonna go and clip carefully across this pushing um, the seams lined up nicely and top stitch there and i'm going to close the lining of the bag and then we are finished we have a complete bag that is i'm really excited about it this fabric is wonderful i may have to buy more before it's gone
You guys, check out this bag. It is adorable. I am so obsessed with it. I think it is so cute. Look inside. I love this fabric, this folklore fabric from Layla Boutique. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to buy more. I already purchased a half yard bundle of this and this fabric is like, this is my kind of fabric. Okay, so inside the bag there in the pattern as written is just one zipper pocket. This is a nice size bag more of a tote bag type thing um, because it, you can't do a crossbody it just but it fits really nicely under your arm it's a smaller bottom so it's still a nice sleek bag it feels really good on and then there's the one zipper pocket on the front um, I did this bag um, as I said just as written aside from adding the decoville light onto the um, front and back panels and then i chose not to do the foam interfacing on the lining because i did the decoville i felt it would already be bulky enough otherwise i did everything on this bag as written so a few thoughts once you figure out how to make this bag something fun to do would be to put a another zipper on the inside just so you have more places to store stuff or do a panel that has you know the slip pockets would be really nice because this is a fairly decent sized bag and having more storage compartments would be really nice but how cute let me know if you've made this pattern or if you want to make it i thought it was really really easy the only thing i struggled with was um the um, magnetic tabs and that's only because I chose to do them in my accent fabric if I have had done them in the um, quilt quilt cotton they would have been a lot easier and then top stitching the top of the bag was pretty tricky because there's a lot of places where a lot of bolt comes together with the straps and where the tabs are so staying nice and straight was really difficult i have really nice matching threads so that doesn't show up too much to bother me at all um and then again because i used the faux leather in the decoville there was a lot more bulk for me if you were doing the bag as written with um, quilters cotton i think you'll be fine there won't be a lot of bulk how cute what do you think Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with this pattern. I have another bag from Bagstock that I'm going to do that pattern as well in review. And it is also another free pattern. It's kind of a smaller bag and it's a crossbody. So if you like those more, be sure to subscribe and keep an eye out for that video. It should be coming soon, hopefully. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you then. Bye.